One, two, three. Good morning. Oh. Whoa! Hey, Instagram. Hey. <laughs> that was like really zoomed in there. Good morning, everyone. Welcome <laughs> to the nursing school show. Happy to have you guys here. Absolutely. I'm Matthew. And this is Christina. Hello. We're doing Ask Me Anything. Nursing school related. And me, Christina. So not me, Matthew. So Matthew, Instagram Christina. Instagram looks weird. Instagram okay. looks weird. Hi. Mm. Kubani. Okay, mm. okay. Emily, okay. You guys YouTube, are YouTube. How's YouTube doing? We sound okay? We look okay? Everything good? Hello. Facebook? Oh anyone? Boy. Anyone out there? Okay. Say hello, hello, hello. Here we go. Oh. I'm going to start this off. Oh, you're going to. Oh. The four main things because oh. we have had so many students that ask us this constantly. So I'm just going to talk about it constantly on this live. The four main things. Four main things. Type them down in the comments if you know what Christina is going to say already. What are the four main things to know in nursing school? Is that. Four main things to okay, know in nursing good. school. Not the four main things for other things. Okay. Four, <laughs> four main, main things, things to know in nursing school. Type them down below yes. if you know them. Bonus points if you are. And if you're new here, go say. ahead while you're at it, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit like, hit, I don't know what else you can hit, but hit the buttons and see what like happens. Like the hearts, buttons, all the things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four main things that you have to know in nursing school. You've got to know these things. Oftentimes we have nursing students that tell us, Christina, I just started nursing school. There's so much to read. There's so many, you know, notes that I take during class. There's just so much information to know. Yes, there is. Good thing that there's only four main things that you have to know in nursing school. Are you ready? Okay. Can somebody write these down on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube so everyone has them and can like screenshot the See, chat? Don't know, so but I'd you. like to know. So okay. here we go, Christina. Here we go. Here four we go. main things: pathophysiology. Signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Okay, right. Oh, boom! <laughs> Arilda, of course you already knew it, my friend. Thank you for writing it down. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four main categories that you have to know in nursing school. Four main things. Now, Here's the thing. We get this question a lot. Well, Christina, this doesn't apply to fundamentals. Yes, it does. Christina, this doesn't apply to med surge. Yes, it does. Christina, this doesn't apply to pediatrics, OB, critical care. Yes, it does, my friend. Okay, listen up. Here's what you're going to do. If you're in fundamentals, if you're in med surge, if you're in pediatrics, OB, mental health, give me another one. Critical care. Did I say OB already? Anything. If you are in any, if you are in nursing school, my friends, <laughs> four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Let's jam on fundamentals for a second. So if you are studying fundamentals, like Carrie, you just said you have a fundamentals exam tomorrow. This is what you need to know, Carrie. So when you are studying things like ABGs, fluids and electrolytes, um, intake and output issues, uh, uh, ventilation, perfusion, r respiration, all of the things that you need to know in fundamentals, right? All of those things you've got to know. Those things focus on the four main categories, pathophysiology, what is happening in the body. So if you have an ABG, you know, disorder out of balance, like metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, what have you, you have to know the patho for that. Same thing with fluid and electrolyte imbalances, like hypovol. Uh, I said hypovolemia. Hypovolemia counts too. Hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hypomagnesemia. Hy Did I say hypo? Hyper? All the hypo. All the hypo hypers. hypers. Calcemia, magnesemia, kalemia, natremia, hypo hyper of all of those things. You have to know the pathophysiology first. What is happening in the body? Then you're going to move on to signs and symptoms. How does that pathophysiology relate and cause those signs and symptoms? Okay, so here's the key. I do not want you to just memorize an entire list of signs and symptoms or an entire list of nursing assessments or an entire list of nursing interventions. That is not going to be useful for you. That's not going to be useful for you if you're just memorizing lists. No, that's why we start with the pathophysiology. You have to know what is happening in the body. And then you can be more able to critically think through the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment, and the nursing interventions as they relate back to that pathophysiology. Does that make sense? So Carrie, you have your fundamentals exam tomorrow. 
I want you to focus. You've got to focus your study time on those four main categories and, of course, what your instructors talk about in class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely goes into critical thinking and thinking Good beyond thinking. just the topics that you have at hand. Because, yes, you can do just rote memorization for every single thing, but that's a lot of memorization. Oh, Christina, there goes some water. Spill water everywhere. <laughs> uh, but really, the critical thinking is getting these these main categories: patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions, and mm -hmm. understanding how each of these categories, how all the disorders work within those. Because then you can kind of backtrack and critically think about each disorder, even though you don't necessarily know everything there is to know about it. Absolutely, so that does help. Because here's what's going to happen. Um, Carrie, can you tell me you are in fundamentals now? Can you tell me, have you taken a nursing school exam before? Because I'm going to tell you what your exam is going to be like. Here's what they're going to test you on. They are going to give you case scenario questions or deep dive questions where they maybe give you a list of signs and symptoms of a possible disorder. And you need to pick out, like select all that apply, select all that apply, SATA questions, right? You have to select all of them that apply to that disorder. Well, here's the thing. If you already, you know, if you just memorized a list of signs and symptoms and there are some signs and symptoms on there that either you've never heard of before, uh, they weren't in your memory, but they might apply to that disorder. That's no good for you. Like that is not how um, they're not going to test you on memorization things. They're going to test you on how well you apply that information to a case scenario question in a real life situation. So that is why we do that. You have to be able to look at that test question, the case scenario and say, oh, okay, so this patient has this disorder and I know the pathophysiology of that. And then if I know the pathophysiology of that, these are the signs and symptoms that I know that go along with it. And then let's take a look at the other ones and see if those make sense as they relate back to the pathophysiology, right? So you have to understand the pathophysiology first. Okay, cool. Uh, taking a break there between pathophysiology and signs and symptoms before we get to signs and symptoms. So Christine's going over the four main categories yeah, that you yeah. need to know. Yeah, nursing, I guess I kinda, I'm kind of done with that. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're kind of done with that. Patho, okay. signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions, but they all have to relate back to the pathophysiology. Oh, okay. There we go. All right, great. If you have any more questions specifically related to that, be sure to type in the comments so that we can answer them specifically. Uh, Eric, you're wondering, is there anything in the membership about chest tubes or trach care? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Uh, it's in our critical care course, I believe, is where I know uh, trach is. I believe uh, is chest tubes in there too? I believe chest tubes. Okay, so critical care yeah. course in the membership community. If you mm -hmm. have specific questions related to that, uh, be sure to use our tutor form where you can just ask our, our nurses uh, on staff. Questions. Specific questions. Be mm -hmm. sure to write specific questions and then they'll get back to you in like 24 hours. So, with it, yeah, sh sh they're really quick. Yep, really quick. Go. So, be sure to use that if you don't find what you're looking for specifically in the critical care course or other courses. So, sweet. There we go. Hey, uh, Carrie, can you tell me what your exam is going to be on tomorrow for fundamentals? So, Carrie, um, something else that I wanted to mention about uh, those four main categories. So, when you are studying for your nursing school exams, there are two things, two main categories you want to focus on, right? Those four main things, patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Alexandra, this is for you too. I have a med mm -hmm. surge exam in like an hour. In like an hour, any pretest tips to keep from stressing out? Well, okay, so... This is not for you then. Okay, so within an hour, <laughs> just don't stress out. Just know that... Basically, anything that you do now to try and cram, that's not going to stick in your head. So just no. take it easy. Relax. Relax. Just prep for your, just, yeah. just get ready and make sure that you arrive right on time. Calm it down. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> um, so when you were studying those four main categories, you need to focus on patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. But you also need to focus on studying the things that your professors talk about in class. So whatever your instructors talked about in class is what you need to focus on. So for example, if you're in, you know, if you're in fundamentals, like you are, Carrie. Um, if you're in fundamentals and let's say you are um, in your first exam, like you are, um, and in the first two weeks you went over ventilation, perfusion, intake and output, elimination. What else do you learn in your first week? Like the nursing process, those things. So you went over those things in class, but then you go to your textbook and your textbook has 
like a bunch of other stuff, like nursing theorists and theorists you've your instructor didn't go over, and it's like deep dives into other things. Just, just ignore it. <laughs> it's the best word, I think. Ignore it. Focus on reading the sections of the book that your professors talked about in class. So nursing theorists is a great example. For nursing fundamentals, you might go over a handful of nursing theorists in class. And then you might read your textbook and find out that there's 16,000 more of them that you didn't talk about in class because there are. There's a lot. You are not going to want to waste your time learning everything about those other 16,000 nursing theorists. That's not going to be helpful for you because what your instructors talk about in class is what they believe are the most important things for you to know and is therefore what's most likely to show up on your exams. Does that make sense? So yes, a question or two might pop up in your exams on one of the 16,000 nursing theorists that you didn't talk about in class. However, there's gonna be a lot more questions about the ones you did, okay? So we want, this is about, you've heard the phrase, study smarter, not harder. Focus or, your study time on the things that matter. Or the Pareto principle, 80%, 20%. Yeah. Yeah, so um, focus on the 80% that will probably be on your test. And are there gonna be some things off out of left field? Maybe. But Absolutely. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So. Oh, Anastasia, uh, yes. After our live is done, all our lives, you can just go back to our YouTube page and rewatch if you would like. Mm -hmm. Yep. We talk about a lot of good stuff here on the Nursing School Show. Okay. Yep. So, Tammy, that kind of goes to you, your question as well, just how to study for exams. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any other tips, tricks for how to study for exams beyond, is, beyond what you were just talking about? That is primarily it. So for, for your core nursing classes, those four main categories, patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing intervention, that's what you need to focus on. And then reading the sections of the book that your professors talk about in class, studying the content and the topics that your professors talk about in class. Now, greasy, gre oh, geez. There's no R there. Geez, I'm hungry. That's hilarious. Geez, I'm hungry. And kiss, uh, kiss, kiss my, kiss my, oh, hello. Okay. I'm finally in nursing school. Sorry, just joining. Do you have anything regarding pathophysiology? I'm struggling to take notes and study. Okay. So here's this for you, along with studying for exams. So when you are in like pathophysiology, um, pathophysiology, this is specifically pathophysiology, the best way that I know how to study for pathophysiology is to break things up step by step. Break things up step by step. So when you are reading um, about pathophysiology in a book or looking at a video online or what have you, however you're studying, I want you to kind of think in your brain, okay, what comes first? Then what happens? And then what happens? And then what happens? pathophysiology step by step. So like this happens, there's a trigger in the body that causes, you know, something to happen. And then this happens and then this happens and then this, this happens. If you've ever watched a pathophysiology video on our YouTube channel, you know that this is how I teach. I break things down for you step by step. So it makes it so much easier. So uh, tulips and Geez, I'm hungry. That's funny. <laughs> I like that one. Um, so if you are struggling with pathophysiology, which um, you said you guys were in the same boat, um, Emily, you too, pathophysiology, um, definitely two things. Go to our YouTube channel and find the patho videos um, that where we break those down for you. Step by step, pathophysiology. And then also, um, if a video that you need or a topic that you need is not on our YouTube channel. It's in our membership community. So you can join the membership community too. nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash join. So if you need help with patho, we have so many videos there. I mean, covering like anything you'll ever need. Um, patho stuff inside the membership step by step. So we break things down step by step. Now, the other thing I want to say about patho is you need two kinds of textbooks for pathophysiology. Okay. You ready? Get ready to screenshot, friends. Ooh, screenshot time. Get ready to screenshot. Where's the, um, I think it's down there. Oh, My, do I have yeah, it? Okay. I, think it's down I there. will get it. I will get it. Okay. okay. Who's ready to screenshot? You need two different kinds of textbooks for pathophysiology. You need, 
I have so go. many books. I need this one. Oh, this one? Thank okay. you. Okay. You need two kinds of textbooks. One, a high level overview book like this. Path of Physiology made incredibly easy. Okay. Screenshot. Can you screenshot? Screenshot. You can just crop screenshot. out my face if you don't like it. Just <laughs> screenshot this, friends. Yay. Okay. Path of Physiology made incredibly easy. This is a high level overview book for patho. It's going to give you a general idea of what's happening with pathophysiology in the body. But it's not going to go super deep into like chem chemical level, cellular level, enzyme level, protein level, you know, all those things. <laughs> so this will give you a very good starting point. You have to know kind of the high level overview first. And then if you need a deeper dive into pathophysiology for like if you're writing a research paper or you just really want to understand something, um, you're really not sure why this sign or symptom connects with the pathophysiology because, um, you know, the high level overview doesn't really give that to you. Um, the Merck manual is the deep dive book that I recommend that I really, really like. Um, this is obviously a physical textbook. They do have an online version. So uh, I think if you can just search maybe Merck manual on Google, like search Merck manual on Google somewhere on Google, search it on <laughs> Google. It's out there. Um, they have a whole website and it's pretty much everything you need on the website. You will want the professional version, not the consumer version. So make sure that when you're uh, going to Merck manual online, that you get the, that you're on the professional version. It'll like say at the top, you're reading the professional version, switch to consumer version, or you're reading consumer version, switch to professional version. You want the professional one. Cool. All right. Screenshot this again. If you are just joining us, friends, we have a lot of you guys just joining us. Screenshot this, please. So you have, you know what textbooks to get for pathophysiology. There you go. Screenshot. Got it. Emily, you said you got it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> okay. So that is what I really recommend for patho. Um, a high level overview and mark manual. On Amazon, it doesn't look like yours. And I searched professional. Okay. Um, so no, this is like, this is the Merck manual. It's a physical book. So I think if you go on Amazon, just search like Merck manual. Um, maybe there's an update. This is the 19th edition. I don't know how old this is. Um, a few years by now. Um, 2011. So there's, I mean, that was 10 years ago. So this is a, this is the 19th edition. Um, so I would check out a more recent one if there's one. Um, and then if you don't want the physical book of the Merck manual, that's fine. Go online, just Google Merck manual. And there's a whole website that gives you basically the same information. But on the website, you want to make sure that you have the professional version and not the consumer version. Does that make sense? The version that we have is a 19th version. This is the 19th edition, edition so I'm yeah, not, of and, the book. And so make sure that it's the most recent one. Most recent edition and professional. Yep. So well, this this is the professional. This yeah. is not a consumer. Like, I don't know if they make a consumer version of the book. Maybe they do. I don't know. Yep. All right. Done. Cool. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of questions coming in. So thank you for your patience. We will get to as many as we can. Stacy, I even saw that you put in Facebook in on YouTube. We'll get to that one right after this uh, first one. And then we'll get to your, your question, Stacy. But okay. Tasha and Nicole were asking, how long do you suggest one studies uh, a day for classes? Mm -hmm. Or how many hours of studying a day would be sufficient? I love this question. Okay. Let's go to the nursing school study system, my friends, because this is here under our frequently asked questions. How many hours should you study? So there are two really kind of a couple, a couple of different recommendations that we have. If you are studying for lecturing skills, so this is on page 42 of the nursing school study system. So if you go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash study system, nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash study system. Yeah, I can go ahead and put that in YouTube. Sweet. That's in here. YouTubes. This is on page 42. And it's actually question one because we got this question a lot. How many hours should you study? So for lecture class, I recommend that you study for two hours 
outside of class for every hour that you are in class. So let's say you are in a lecture class for three hours per week for one of your classes. Well, if you're in lecture class for three hours a week, you are going to study outside of class for six hours. Three times two is six. Look, Christina can do basic And that's math. math. That's math. <laughs> it's about where it ends for me <laughs> without a calculator. So three hours of lecture class for one class, two, study for two hours for each hour you were in class. So then you would study six hours outside of class for that one class. Now, if you have another class, same thing. Um, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're in class for two hours and then you would study for four hours outside of class for that class. Um, Tulips, you had a question. What about online classes? Depends on how the online class runs. Here's what I recommend. All, actually, a lot of online classes are kind of similar to in class. You still have an instructor there with you doing like, you know, Zoom calls or something with you. So however long your class time is, study for double that amount outside of class per week. If you are um, doing like, I'm thinking, you can tell me, Tulips, how yours is structured, but here's kind of what I'm thinking you're asking, is if you have online classes and it's totally um, like self-paced, like there's no actual class that you attend. Maybe your instructor puts a PowerPoint, uh, up and then does audio recordings over it. That's fine. I would, um, <sighs> for that, you're kind of just studying as you go. What would you think? If your instructor does PowerPoints and audio over it, um, Oh, no Zoom, just lectures posted with it. Yeah. So there's no class, right? Yeah. No, no just Zoom, lecture, just lectures posted with posted a PowerPoint. With PowerPoint. That's PowerPoint. exactly, yeah. That's Does anyone exactly else have that thinking. where there's not really a lecture at all? You, you just get PowerPoints and maybe a lecture. And like an audio like, recording for the PowerPoints. Um, Deborah says yes. Yeah, I would say that... Um, in the same way, you kind of go through the PowerPoints and then however long it takes you to go through those PowerPoints with the audios, that's your lecture class. And then you're going to study outside of that for two hours each time. Emily, you have Zoom class. Charlotte. Charlotte, good morning, my sweet friend. Welcome back. I, I was just thinking about you the other day. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, uh, Haley says, yeah, me too. So yeah, for that, um, yeah, I guess that that would be, yeah, that would be appropriate. Well, it depends. Yeah. yeah. I would say, you know, I guess it also depends on the instructor too, because some instructors might just give you a PowerPoint, right? A PowerPoint or something um, where there's like no other information. So it is going to depend a bit. Let me think on that. Like, how would I study if I was just, if I was given nothing? If I was just given a PowerPoint, let me get back to you on that. I'm going to, I'm going to think about that, how to fuse those together. Um, geez, you're so funny. I love that. Um, two hours per day. No, it's not two hours per day. It's study two hours per week for every hour you are in class. So if you are in class for three hours a week, for a, if you have one class, like let's say you have a pathophysiology class and it's three hours for one class, then you would study for six hours per week outside of class. Does that make sense? Haley yeah, says that enough. her school recommends or suggests two hours per credit. That is, that 10, that's like, that's pretty much exactly what it is. Cause isn't like one credit an hour, typically like one credit at a school is like an hour of class or 50 minutes of lecture time. I, I don't know if there's any correlation there. But yeah, maybe. I think yeah. so. If you're in like 10 or 10 credits, that's like 10 hours of in-class time. I could, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. I'm like 90% sure. Yeah. Haley says so. that's correct. So there you go. I mean, for every credit you're doing, um, you know, double check that, that, I, that is what I remember for my school. Maybe other schools are different, but so if, um, if like one credit is like an hour of class time or 50 minutes of class time or something okay. like that. So then, yeah, you would study for two hours a week for every hour you're in class. There you go.
And that's for lecture. That's for lecture. Okay. Yes. And then how about for clinicals? Okay. So for clinicals, again, so this is, let me find the cover here. The nursing school study system. If you can get this at nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash study system. This is your step-by-step -step guide for how to study in nursing school. All of the information that, you know, I have been teaching for years now for nursing students to help you learn how to study better in nursing school. I condensed all of it into a step-by-step -step guide for you to follow. So this is there for you. If you are a nursing SOS member though, it is free for you inside the membership community. Um, so don't go buy it if you're a member already. It's in the membership. So just log in. Um, there was a question about annual um, for the membership. Yes, you can. Um, yes, you have to scroll I, a lot. There, there, there was a question that I saw there. So, so uh, yeah, we the membership is open. You can go to nursingschoolsuccess.com slash join to find out more. And yes, there you can either pay monthly, month to month basis, or you can... There's an annual option as well, so you can pay yearly. And you get a discount for the annual. There you go. Nursing school study system. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash join. So this is on page 42 under how many hours should you study? So for clinical, study two to four hours per week for your clinical. That's what I say because it wouldn't, you have like, a 12 hour clinical day, maybe two 12 hour clinical days or three, eight hour clinical days. Like if you did, if you studied for two hours for every hour you were at clinical, you would not have enough time, right? So two to four hours for clinical per week. Now you might need to do more. If you, let's say you have like a, a like a huge research paper that's coming out. You have a huge research paper that you have to do on one of your patients. You might need to do a little bit more than that, the two to four hours per week. Um, but if you don't, if you have just like care plans to do, maybe you're on the two hour end, if it, you know, if you're pretty quick with care plans. So that's kind of how that rolls. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, um, Skills Lab is the last one. If you're in Skills Lab, um, if you have a, uh, you know, skills lab class to do, I recommend that you study outside of your skills lab class for every one hour you're in class. So one hour to one hour. So study one hour outside of skills for every hour that you're in skills lab. So let's say you have, you know, two hours of skills, study two hours outside of your skills lab to get practice in. Okay. And I think Haley yeah. brings up a good point too, that like, this is, this is kind of a guideline, mm -hmm. guideline hours. Uh, obviously, as you dig into your studies, um, it could take a little bit less time. It could take a little bit more time. You definitely need to critically think and practice your critical thinking while you're at it. Critically think on whether you need more time or less time to study a specific topic. So definitely yeah. uh, be tune into that a little bit. Yeah, this just is because just we say that it's, it's two to one or whatever, uh, if you don't get through all of your studying and you hit that mark, you don't just say, oh, I'm done studying. You, yeah. you, you kind of play along with that. And it's just a guideline for uh, a starting point. This so. is exactly like Charlotte. Yes. So so three hour skills lab, I would study three hours outside of skills lab. Yes. Now, just what Matthew was saying, let's say one week you learn um, IV. What, you know, what are some that you would learn together? IV push and maybe IV piggybacks in one week. You're learning an IV push medication and IV piggybacks. So if you are learning that in one week and you feel pretty confident with that, um, you know, maybe you are uh, studying and practicing outside of class for one hour and you feel okay with that and you allotted yourself three hours you don't need to to practice the full three if you're like, I got this. You know, if you get if you um do it faster or learn it faster, great. Um, you know, it might might take you a little longer sometimes, you know, it, it kind of balances out, but this is a good baseline, gives you a good starting point to know kind of benchmarks how many hours to study. Mm -hmm. And Haley, definitely your, your last point too. Very good. Sleep is really important as well. So yep. be sure mm -hmm. to make sure that you're sleeping as well. Haley's In reading my mind. <laughs> so sleep, very important as well. Yep.
If you're having trouble kind of juggling all that, we do recommend a planner and to plan out your day by hour. Yep. Just to see where all your time is going. Mm -hmm. um, I We did get a little bit of a planner tangent, but we did get yep. a, a, a quick question, just not a long answer, but just a really quick answer to this. Some people say, well, I'm willing to put in the time to put together an hourly schedule mm -hmm. just to see where my time goes. But that seems like, a lot of time that I'll be wasting on doing that when I could do other things. Is it worth it yeah. to do that? What is that quote? You probably know it. Like, like an hour spent or whatever time is spent planning is time saved. Something like that. Is there, there's like, there's like things like yeah, that. I'm sure there's a quote like that. I, the, the analogy or story that, um, I always turn to is the, the, um, what you call it? Lumber. Jack, lumberjack cutting down a tree. You can cut down one tree in, let's say, eight hours or whatever with a really dull axe. But if you spend an hour really getting your oh. axe really, really sharp mm -hmm. and it takes an hour to cut down the tree, then you've saved an hour. It's or you've, 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 you've saved a lot more time. Yeah. So the planning ahead of time, the prep ahead of time does save you, even though it does seem like a lot of potential busy work. But mm -hmm. if you find out where all your time is going, then that is, that is very helpful. So. Yep. Absolutely. Emily, yes, you just got a planner. Sweet. Awesome. I, I think it's just so important to plan um, plan your time hour by hour. Yeah. Um, also, something that you could do is, um, uh, and what I like to do too, is Google Calendar or like an online something. So if you can plan your time hour by hour and then set it as recurring. So let's say, for example, you know, you go to bed every night at nine or something and you sleep until five, unless you have a baby. <laughs> and are waking up all the time at night, then you can like set it to recurring, right? So every night your, your time is planned like 9 PM to 5 AM you're sleeping. And then you don't have to like write it in again and again and again. It's just recurring. Yep. 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 Very cool. All right, Stacy, what NCLEX prep programs would you recommend I'm in my last semester and they say we should start practicing NCLEX style questions. However, there's a ton of programs out there. Yes. What would you suggest? I'm also bundling up a question that was asked uh, at the beginning of this live, actually. Any good apps to practice for nursing school? You can bundle that all yes. together. Yes. Uh, so, okay. So two main resources for you, Stacy. Um, the first one is an app. It's called My Mastery. The My Mastery app for NCLEX prep practice questions. So my mastery, check them out. Um, you will want to make sure, uh, Stacey, are you in an RN program or an LPN program? Which, which uh, license RN. are you taking? Oh, RN. Okay. So my mastery RN, make sure that it's the RN NCLEX, NCLEX RN exam, um, that you get. So my mastery, just Google my mastery and that should pop up there for you. Now, the second resource is a physical book and it's the Saunders comprehensive review guide. Do you have it back there? I don't know. Which I don't have back here. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I'll have to find it. Um, Saunders Comprehensive Review Guide is the one that I recommend. It's really, really good. It has like a high, like general overview outline of the information, and then it has practice questions. So it's really good for studying for the NCLEX because it's like a general overview of things like, you know, just points to remember and then practice questions. So that helps. Yep, yep, yep. All right. And um, those are my two favorite. And that's just for nursing school as well. Like the, the other question was just what apps to use for nursing school. I and I think just use the, both of them. I think that just goes mm -hmm. to our general um, tip or guideline is just, yeah, practice, practice, mm -hmm. practice, 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 lots of practice questions. Just really get used to, again, like you said, the NCLEX style questions. And uh, really, that's that's what that's for is to get through a lot just so that you're really comfortable with the type of questions that are being asked. Mm -hmm. So you can remove that from your stress level uh, when actually taking your exam. Yep. Um, what about UWorld or Kaplan question banks? Uh, Stacy, can you tell me how did you do in nursing school so far? If you did pretty good in nursing school so far, I wouldn't, I, you're going to be fine on the NCLEX. I would honestly just do the, my mastery questions, practice questions and a supplement with sa the Saunders book. That's, that's what I would do. Um, 
I think that's all you need. If you've done pretty well in nursing school, um, you're going to be fine. So if you feel like you need a little bit more and you want to take a guided class, I would recommend the Hearst review. <sighs> um, struggle with some things. Okay. If you are not super confident, Hearst review, I would check that one out. I would check that one off. I think they're online now. Um, Hearst review, H U R S T review. If you need a content review for the NCLEX. Yep. Jade asks a, a good kind of related question. Uh, I'm in my last semester. Uh, not sure when I should take my NCLEX. Is it best to apply it to residency programs now? That's a really good question. Um, last semester, not sure when I should take my NCLEX, is it best to apply for residency programs? If you, it depends on the residency program. Um, I, so I, I think in this area, at least a lot of residency programs, you can apply for before you take the NCLEX and pass your boards. So it, but it depends. So if you can apply to residency programs now, I totally would. I totally would. But if you have to wait, then, uh, obviously you have to wait. Um, but if you can, great. Um, now, with like when to take your NCLEX, you cannot take the NCLEX until you get what's called an ATT, authorization to test. So you need your ATT, authorization to test. And uh, you will get that once your, your school has to submit all the paperwork and stuff. And then you'll get your authorization to test. And then you can register for the NCLEX. So hopefully your school gets their paperwork in um, as soon as possible. I think usually they're pretty good. So there you go. Haley, you thank great. you so much. Stacy. I saw that you saw that. Uh, Saunders Comprehensive Review for NCLEX RN Examination 8th Edition. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Haley. And yes, um, your question was right up as soon as we're done. Are we done with this topic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. All right, Haley. I think that um, it. Recommendations for working with a study group since our class is not on campus. Mm. So how did how to work as a group and not in a group. Uh, <laughs> can you can you like get together in person, like socially distant <laughs> style? Could you do that? I mean, I think that would be super fun. Um, and that or like Zoom. Yeah, any you know, kind of like Zoom. Yeah, so you have Zoom lecture, so mm -hmm. all, you guys all Everyone have Zoom. Has Zoom. So I would just do Zoom. Probably just set up setting up your own own Zoom group or whatever mm -hmm. to to be together as together as possible. Um, if you are guys, if you guys are comfortable meeting in person, socially distanced, that could help as well. Yep. Um, so best way to oh okay yeah definitely and best way to document share. So you have a really good Google point. Docs. Uh, Google Docs is really really great because yep. most everyone has it. If not, it's free to get right. Yeah. And as long as everyone has the same shared document, um, it gets updated really quickly. Everyone can have access to the same document, and you guys can see all the same things. Even when taking notes, you you were recommending absolutely uh, take notes as a group mm -hmm. and put it all in the same doc. And so you guys can see and maybe mit or fill in some blanks that other people have missed, or you'll see other people's notes and kind of get a better idea of maybe what the teacher was talking about. So Google Docs for document sharing is really the way to go. Yeah. So group projects, friends, if you are in a group project, um, you know, with other students in your class, Google Docs for sure. Pretty much everyone has a Gmail account or Google account. Make sure that um, really the key thing to to uh, any group project is to make sure that everyone knows what they need to do, like everyone knows what their role is, and then people do it and everyone can see what everyone else's parts are. And so that's why Google Docs really, really helps is because um, when you log into your, your Google account and go to the Google Doc, you can see where people are typing in real time, what work they've already done, where they're at with things. So it's like kind of embedded accountability, right? So um, making sure that everyone is doing what they should be doing, uh, people making sure people are on track um, and things like that. So it's really, really nice to have that ability just to see in a Google Doc where everyone's at. You have everything in one place. It makes just so easy. So Haley, that is absolutely what I would recommend is the Google Doc for you. And then like we said, Zoom, um, Zoom for meeting online for your, for your group project. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, if everyone has definitely webcams so you can see each other and better accountability that way too. Yep, so absolutely. Yeah. I think both of those things is pretty much except for the zoom. I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. roughly what you, you did too. Yeah. So yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Uh, all right. So Deborah has a couple questions and wrapped up with that. So all of these questions kind of all commingle together. So I'm oh, going to take a bunch of them and jam them together. So here we go. Yep. Uh, Deborah, when should uh, you join the membership? I just got accepted in nursing school this fall and I really want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Also, what do I need to do to prepare for nursing school? So take that, put it to the side. Okay. <laughs> Scrubs and Freckles is asking advice and tips for new nursing students starting in two weeks. So Woo! Scrubs and Freckles starting in two weeks, you're a member. Okay. okay. So there you go. So that's all kind of together. And Rodney was also asking dosage and calculations. <laughs> okay and i know we have some on facebook who are asking about dose calc too yep. and just starting nursing school okay so so i think what you start off with is when to when to join the membership okay and then what to what to do to prep for starting when should you join the membership community toby says join now deborah trust me yeah. <laughs> i agree <laughs> <laughs> so if you are starting nursing school within the next one to two months, you absolutely want to join the membership community right now, like yesterday. So make sure you join. <laughs> Haley's like, thanks. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yes, join the membership community ASAP if you are starting nursing school within the next two months. So there's that. It's just going to help you get prepared, understand, um, you know, how to study in nursing school. We've got a lot of courses in there that's going to show you how to study in nursing school, how to start school off right, and just how to get prepared. It's, it's like gold for you in nursing school. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so is Toby. Toby's telling you right now. <laughs> Joy now, trust me. Um, for sure. Now, for everyone else, Make sure if you are like not interested in joining, that's totally fine. Um, here's what you're going to want to do. Dose calc. Before you start nursing school, you absolutely have to do and understand dosage calculations before you start nursing school. So that's where you should be putting your time, focusing your time absolutely. before starting nursing yep. school. Focus that all on dose calc. Yep. And so we have a dose calc course inside the membership community. Uh, so. If you wanted to join and become a nursing SOS member, you can. Um, we have a whole dose cut course that you're going to want to go through before you start school. So it's going to help you so, so much. I'm telling you. But if you don't want to join this, totally fine. Go to YouTube, type in nursing SOS dose calc. We have a few videos there that will walk you through how to do um, dose calc in nursing school. Uh, Scrubs and Freckles, I'm also in the community as well. Yay! Yay! Yep. Yeah, and Stacy. I know a lot of you guys on here are on the membership. <laughs> you guys are awesome. We have the most supportive community. Yeah, Stacy just ever. saying everyone is so best. helpful on this chat as well. So yeah, our community both in and out of the membership mm -hmm. is is just a really awesome. supportive group. So mm -hmm. I really like that. All right. So yeah, that was a lot of questions all bunched up. But to recap, join one to two months before if you're not joined yet. One to two months before you actually start nursing school. Uh, and then... Yeah. Uh, really in preparation to start a nursing school, just really study dose calc. So For sure. either on our YouTube channel, uh, nursing SOS dose calc. Yep. Uh, doses yep. calculations. We're I actually just posted up uh, a series of videos about dose calc. Uh, if you want all of the dose calc videos in the membership, there there's a dose calc course that Absolutely. you should be going through too. Um, so. Deborah, you say you start in September. So you will want to join like July, August. Okay. To make sure. So like one to two months before you start your program, that will give you enough time to go through the dose calc course that we have in the membership community, um, where we'll walk you through dose calc, how to get all those questions, right? That'll also give you enough time to go through our course on how to study in nursing school. So there's, there's a couple of courses in there that you will just want to, um, you know, watch the videos inside those courses to help you out before you start. Can we do that one? Yes, we can do that one. Uh, yeah, AJ. Yay! So many electrolytes and many videos and resources, which is great, but so much information can be overwhelming. What's the best way to organize the electrolytes and functions? So friends, um, again, the membership community, nobody teaches fluid and electrolytes like we do. Nobody. 
it is the way that we teach is so unique. If you have watched any of our videos on YouTube, you know me, you know how I teach, you know how our team teaches step by step. We walk you through step by step how things happen in the body, how the signs and symptoms relate to those things, all of the steps. We walk you through nursing school step by step. So same goes for fluid and electrolytes. This is kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of this live. Four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. All right. So I'm going to put a pin on that. Do it. Ritty and Pretty Coco um, are asking best way to study for pediatrics. And then also, can you help me out with med surge too? Yeah. So this is all med surge topics. We started out the conversation this live with this, the four main things to learn, four main categories to learn in nursing school. This covers pediatrics, this covers critical care, this covers fluid and electrolytes, this covers uh, med surge, um, et cetera. So Absolutely. this all applies to those topics. Four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing intervention. So AJ, when you were studying fluid electrolytes and who was studying med surge? Uh, everyone else is studying yeah, med pretty surge. Coco. Pretty Coco. Pretty is studying pediatrics. pediatrics. This goes for all of you guys. Patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four main categories. Now, for fluid and electrolytes, make sure that you are connecting everything back to the pathophysiology and the physiology of what is happening in the body. Okay. That is key. So I really recommend we have a whole fluid and electrolyte course inside the membership. I highly recommend AJ, if you're not in there already that you join, um, it's going to help you so, so much. And anyone else who is struggling with fluid and electrolytes, I just, I can't even tell you it's so, so great to just have the step-by-step. -step. Here's what you need to know about fluid and electrolyte disorders in one place. That is super easy for you to understand. If you're not interested in joining the membership, we actually do have that course available just to, to buy standalone. If, if you'd like that too, uh, we, we did uh, bundle up our fundamentals course. And so it's the fundamentals course and fluid and electrolytes. So if you're not it's interested in joining the membership, you can go ahead and take a look at that. Everything that we have available is in nursingschoolofsuccess.com slash shop. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash shop. There you go. So there you go. Check um, it out. Nicole, do you have any doses calculation tips? So we were just talking about this, I think probably right, right before you joined. Um, we do have a doses calculation course mm -hmm. uh, that definitely take a look at that. So either the individual course, again, in our shop, or it's all in our membership community if you want to join that way as well. Yep. Uh, if you're not interested in any of that, our YouTube videos, uh, Nursing SOS, Dosage Calculations, there's a whole series of dosage calculation there. Uh, yes. The one main tip is do dimensional analysis. Yes, dimensional analysis. Make sure that you understand dosage calculations with dimensional analysis, not the formula method. Please, please, please. The formula method will fail you as you get more advanced in your program. That's just, that's where I'm going to leave it. Do, do dimensional analysis, please, please, please. Yep. Cool. Pretty Coco, I think we answered one of your questions. Yeah, so your your question, as I understand it, Pretty Coco, can you help me out with MedSurge 2 in my third semester, how to pass yep. and what exactly to study over to help me remember the info? So, yep. so it's I those just four main that. topics. Those four main categories. Um, so rewind this video after we're done so you can check that out. Definitely. You guys have a lot of questions Really today. good we're questions. Like Thank you so much. This is Yeah, this. we're just rolling through it. So all of our lives are available to watch again. Mm -hmm. After we're done with our lives, you can also watch previous lives. Uh, if you have not yet, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the bell in YouTube if you're on YouTube, or hit like or whatever you do, hit on Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Uh, so that you are notified whenever we do go live. Yes. So, Make sure you go. subscribe. Yep. Subscribe mm -hmm. and hit the bell, please, on YouTube. Yes, sir. Uh, Sydney, do you nursing? That's okay. a good one. Nursing exam. So I'm, I'm yep. guessing. Okay. This so medications. Oh, in regards to medications. So mm -hmm. kind of switching topic a little bit. Medications. Sydney's asking, do nursing exams always use generic names or should we memorize both generic and brand names? Such a great question. Um, so good news and bad news, Sydney. Um, the good news is that the NCLEX and hopefully your nursing school exams as well will use the generic name always. 
the generic name should always be listed on your nursing school exams. On the NCLEX, the generic name will always be listed there on the NCLEX. So when you go and take your NCLEX, um, when you go and take the NCLEX, the generic name is always going to be there. Now, here's the bad news. <laughs> In your lecture exams for nursing school, I'm hoping that your instructors will follow that, like how the NCLEX teaches or how the NCLEX tests with the generic name. But they might not. They might just use the brand name, which is unfortunate. Um, they shouldn't, but they might. So I would ask them up front, how, uh, what names of medications are you going to use on your exam? I would ask your instructors that. They really should be including the generic name on your exams because that is how the NCLEX will test. Um, so for... For you, for you, when you are going to take your lecture exam and then going to the NCLEX, you have to know the generic name of the medication for the NCLEX. The NCLEX might include the brand name too, but they are always going to use the generic name. So the generic name of the medication will always be listed. Does that make sense? But for nursing school exams that your instructors write, I'm hoping and they should always include the generic name, but make sure to double check that before you go in to take your test because... I'm hoping that's the case, um, but it might not totally be. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. I want to back up. We were talking about dose calc, and mm -hmm. I actually missed what La Layla, Layla. Layla um, mentioned also. So I just want to back up a little bit. This is to dose calc. I'm having trouble with dose calc. Math intimidates me. I've studied the docs you sent me, but I'm still lost. So uh, as a member... Uh, you were probably taking a look at the workbooks and the practice problems that we have for you. I would suggest probably the, the best way forward for you, especially since you're in the membership community, is to uh, write down some specific examples and walk through it, like like actually walk step by step through it, kind of like how we do in our practice problems and in our mm -hmm. dose calc videos, how Nicole walks through that. Walk through some pro problems of your own, write them all out. Uh, either video it or take a picture of it and then send it through a tutor form Yep. so that uh, you can kind of outline what exactly you're doing so that our nurses can take a look at it and be able to better guide you specifically for for your cases. Yeah. So, so if you, uh, Layla, Nicole will go over it with you. So do the question, like do a practice problem and write out your work and where you're getting stuck and send it to us. Okay. Send us the picture or just write it out on the tutor form. And then Nicole will get back to you and help you out with it where you're getting stuck and walk you through it. So that is a huge aspect of our membership community. You guys is the ability to submit questions to our team and a nurse on our team will get back to you and answer your questions. So you're not alone in nursing school. Like we do not just leave you to watch a video and try to figure it out yourself. That's not how we do it here. So anytime you have questions, you know, submit a tutor form and we'll get back to you. It's awesome. <laughs> so there you go. Awesome. So yep. hopefully you'll, you're able to do that so that um, Nicole can definitely take a look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura, I'm in my last semester. Any advice for transition into capstone? Mm -hmm. um, I'm having a hard time. I've done well, but bought my first exam for capstone, which is like policies, theorists, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure what you mean by capstone. Sem last semester is it first? I can't really read first it on exam Facebook. for capstone. So uh, I'm, I'm in, in my, my last, last yeah last semester. Any advice for transition in the capstone? So is that a specific class transition yeah, into capstone? I mean, see, I didn't have like a capstone class. That's going to be like your project class, right? And then I've done well first first, first exam, exam. For, which is like policies theorists. So is it kind of the that's going to be a lot of memorization. So there are two types, like we say, oh, we haven't talked about this in a couple of weeks, so let's talk about it now. Anything that's critical thinking, friends, four main categories, patho, science and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Anything that you just have to straight up memorize, like nursing theorists, um, the vaccination schedule for pediatrics, um, anatomy and physiology, yeah, so microbiology. Ad Addie, you were just asking any advice for taking microbiology and anatomy. So yeah, th this, this goes stuff. to you, some prereqs. All of these that don't fall within those four, the four categories of, of nursing school, mm -hmm. um, things that you need 
rote memorization. That's really it is just rote memorization. So tips that we have for rote memorization. Yes. Um, Flashcards and whiteboards. Anything that you just need to memorize, flashcards and whiteboards. I really like writing things out again and again and again. Repeating them to myself um, helps me hear it. If you're an auditory learner, repeating it to yourself again and again and again. I'm teaching it to someone else. Um, writing it out on a whiteboard over and over and over again. If you're a visual learner, that will help. If you're a kinesthetic learner, even that will help because you're physically writing things out. Um, so rote memorization. Yep. Lots and lots of repetition. Yep. Flashcards, whiteboards. Um, try and get as much of your other senses involved. So that's writing, that's uh, verbalizing it, talking out loud to yourself while you're writing it down or teaching other people. Once you understand the material enough to teach it to other people, um, taking yeah. taking what you know and translating it to more common speak or whatever to um, someone that's not going through nursing school so that they understand it. So that process of getting what you know and um, telling it to someone else in another way also helps you remember things. So teaching other people, um, yeah, just a lot of practice and a lot of repetition. Yep. Um, Haley says use open lab and tutoring when you can for AMP. Absolutely. Open lab friends, open lab. Yep. Members say, man, I used open lab a lot in AMP. Like you just go and yeah, you, you just go through like the mannequins and like, it's just a lot of memorization. Mm -hmm. and also what I did for, for anatomy and physiology is like take pictures, take pictures of the mannequins and then memorize it that way. Yeah. Yep. So, Laura, I'm not exactly sure what's involved in transition caps. That sounds like a specific course. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But again, if it's theorists, if it's things that you need rote memorization, then policies those, and stuff. Yeah, and, policies. And also, was, like capstone, like projects and stuff, is is not really like studying for an exam as much. It's just like doing a huge research paper, too. You know. So there's a lot of more aspects that go into a capstone. Um, most likely, unless you're, maybe your school is structured that way. Um, but yeah, for us, we had like a big project on like, um, we didn't have like, they didn't call it a capstone class or anything for us, but we did have a project we had to do where, uh, it was like patient safety. So we worked, um, in a small group and we had to, you know, write a big, big paper about, um, improving patient outcomes uh and they gave us like a scenario and you know we had to we had to write a whole paper about it so that was more kind of what ours was like so awesome yeah uh giovanni was asking will all these tips uh work for lpns yes so for lpn students if you're on an lpn um program LPN is slightly different. These tips will work for you when we talk about the four main categories, pathophysiology, science and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. The nursing assessment and the nursing interventions might look different for you. Like the nursing assessment for an LPN program is primarily collecting data, where the RN's role is interpreting that data and making clinical judgments on it making nursing judgments and nursing decisions based on that data. Whereas the LPN role and scope of practice is more like data collection. Uh, so that, that will be a slight difference for you. Yes, we have a lot of LPN students inside our membership community. Um, you just have to know going into it that there will be more information in there than what you need. So there you go. So don't get like overwhelmed or anything. Alrighty, friends, uh, if you are on YouTube or if you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. We just passed 60,000 YouTube subscribers. Yay. What? That's incredible. So, so thank you all. Thank you, 60,000 of you. My, that's be, pretty amazing. Be, be part of the 60 to 70 crowd. Be part of the 60 <laughs> to 70 crowd. So hit subscribe. We, we also, it's, that's also so that you're notified whenever we do go live or post new videos. We just posted a, a dosage calculation video yes. yesterday. It's pediatric, pediatric. dosage calculation. Mm -hmm. So if you have not checked that out, go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, but yeah, so good. be sure that you're subscribed because we go live every Monday and Wednesday. Yep for these AMAs to answer your questions to answer yep. your questions. Yep, yep, yep. All right, my friends, we will see you on Monday. Today's Wednesday. We'll see you on Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.